This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to morning worship from St Peter's Church, Ipsley on this Monday the 20th of June. My name is Linda Nicholas and I'm part of the ministry team at St Peter's and I'm really pleased that you could join with me this morning for our prayer time. This week we'll be following the lectionary readings with a psalm and a reading from the book of Joshua. Some of the readings are quite long, so you might like to follow along with your Bibles. Uh, I will be reading from the NRSV, Anglicised version of the Bible, but please do follow in whatever version that you have in front of you. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this morning is Psalm 30. That's Psalm 30. And... It is a psalm of David and it's a song at the dedication of the temple of David. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favour is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favour, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks to you forever. Glory to the Father 
and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Have you ever noticed as we go about our day-to-day -day lives that some people seem to be happy all the time? Although to us it may just seem that they're happy all the time, but the truth is no one is happy all of the time. Part of living in this world, this, this sinful world, is having a life filled with sin, enemies, retaliations, bitterness, gossip, and the list is endless. The difference for the true follower of Jesus is an awareness, an awareness amidst all of the difficulties in our lives, that our God will always take care of us. Even though our life may, lives may be filled with all manner of trials and burdens, we know that weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Although we must remember that morning may not come until our entrance into God's heavenly kingdom, but that will truly be a morning of great joy. Perhaps one of the greatest difficulties in this, the 21st century, is that we have lost the realisation that true joy is found in Christ alone. All of the trinkets of this age will pass away. And though they may give momentary pleasure, they will certainly not give us lasting joy. Even as Christians, we're sometimes dazzled by the things of this world and often find our hearts led astray by the same temptations that affect all. What are we to do? How can we insulate ourselves from these unending temptations? By the grace of God, we can. Let us find ourselves in God's word. Let us continue to read, study and pray. Our strength never was and never will be in ourselves, but rather our only strength lies in God himself. So let us, like the psalmist, look to Christ, for in him alone is found joy, peace and love. Only in him will we have everlasting joy, both in this life and the life to come. And the psalmist concludes this psalm with these words. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. My prayer today is that God will give us joy in the midst of life's burdens because we know that his favour is for all time. Our second reading is Joshua 14 and it is the whole of the chapter. Joshua 14. These are the inheritances that the Israelites received in the land of Canaan, which the priest Eleazar and Joshua, son of Nun, and the heads of the families of the tribes of the Israelites distributed to them. Their inheritance was by lot, as the Lord had commanded Moses for the nine and a half tribes. For Moses had given an inheritance to the two and a half tribes beyond the Jordan, but to the Levites he gave no inheritance among them. For the people of Joseph were two tribes, 
Manasseh and Ephraim, and no portion was given to the Levites in the land, but only towns to live in, with their pasture lands for their flocks and herds. The Israelites did as the Lord commanded Moses. They allotted the land. Then the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh and Nemethite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God in Kanash Barnea, concerning you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back him an honest report. But my companions who went up with me made the heart of the people fail. Yet I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden shall be an inheritance for you and for your children forever, because you have wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. And now, as you see, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel was journeying through the wilderness. And here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as I was on the day that Moses sent me. My strength now is as my strength was then, for war and for going and coming. So now, Give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on that day how the Anakim were there with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I shall drive them out, as the Lord said. Then Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. So Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, to this day, because he wholeheartedly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Now the name of Hebron was formerly Kiriath Arba. This Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim, and the Lord has rest from war. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, just in case you may have missed some of the Joshua readings last week, the book of Joshua tells how Israel settled in Canaan, the land God promised to give them. The book gets its name from its main character, Joshua who had become the leader of Israel following the death of Moses. And the book has clearly two parts. In the first part, chapters 1 to 12, the Lord helped Israel capture many of the cities and towns of Canaan. Sometimes this help involved miracles. For example, the battle at Jericho. Later, in the battle at Gibeon, and the Lord made huge hailstones fall from the sky and crush the enemy soldiers. He made the sun stand still so the Israelites had a proper period of daylight. But the Lord refused to help Israel if the people broke their agreement to worship only him and to obey his commands. For example, in the battle at Ai, Israel was defeated because one person broke Israel's agreement with the Lord. Chapter 7, verses 1 to 12. The second book of Joshua, chapters 13 to 24, describes how each tribe received its land. And in chapter 14, we read more of the splitting up of the land and we also read of a man of unshakable faith. In Numbers 14, 
24, God said, but my servant Caleb, because has a different spirit and has followed me wholeheartedly, I will bring into the land into which he went and his descendants shall possess it. Now, 45 years later, Caleb stepped up to remind Joshua of the Lord's promise and to claim his land. Notice, he didn't ask Joshua for the lush land in the valley. He asked for the hill country that was populated by people known as the Anakim. At 85 years of age, Caleb was still faithful. He was feisty and prepared for a battle. What an example Caleb has set for us. We are never too old to trust God for great victories, nor should we be shy about claiming God's promises. From the accounts of the life of Caleb, we see a faithful man who trusted God to fulfil his promises when others allowed their fears to override their small faith. God blessed Caleb for his faithfulness and patience. An encouragement to us all. Like Caleb, we should be prepared to follow God in every circumstance, patiently waiting for him to fulfil his promises and ready to take action when the time is right. And we come to a time of prayer. Let's pray. God, help us. Where we are weak, make us strong. Where we are wavering, help us lay our anchor down. May we find strength through knowing you hold us. May we see your hand in our everything. May we fall into your arms of grace so that we never feel the pangs of commendation rip us apart because that is not you. Truly, we want nothing that is not associated with you. Lord God, you are the one that leaves us on full, not once, but all the time. God, give us you. Increase our faith. May we know strongly you are what we need to run after. You are the answer to everything. You are the only way. Tie down our heart into you. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the church. And today in the Diocesan Diary, we pray for the Dudley Team Ministry and for James St James's Church as they have some difficult conversations ahead concerning its future. We pray for all who have not yet returned since COVID-19. We pray for the Church of St Francis as it hosts a messy church for the whole parish with plans for a parish, mainly music, progressing well. And we pray for the clergy, Hugh Burton and Sue Hale, and for readers, Melissa Rose and Maggie Cliff. And we pray for all of the churches in the Diocese of Worcester, for its bishops, archdeacons, clergy, lay ministers and its congregations, may all be working toward unity, an unshakable faith and a desire to do your will. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations for food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, that your love may bring peace to all your children. 
We continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and the surrounding areas. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the lying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would just hold them and protect them, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for the sick. Lord, we pray that you comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We particularly remember those for whom we pray. All those mentioned in the weekly catch, those known to us, for those who mourn, all those with no one to pray for them. May you offer your comfort, your peace, your love to all who suffer as you wrap them in your loving, caring arms. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord bless us. May the Lord preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining with me this morning. And I hope to share with, worship with you tomorrow when the readings will be Psalm 32 and Joshua 21 verses 43 to 22 verse 8. So bye for now.